Welcome to this video. Today we are going to look at the scope and the breadth of all the different analysis techniques that's available so that you know where to go to go and find all of these analysis techniques and start to do some self-study around them. But we will do a deep dive into user stories just to get you started and I'll show you how you can use ChatGPT to help you elaborate your user stories and how you can use it to help educate you on how to do it really well. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm really glad you found us. If you want to subscribe, you'll learn a lot more of business analysis or perhaps just like the video. Thank you so much for your support. Great, let's now dive in and learn all about analysis techniques and specifically also user stories. So today's video is all about me showing you the scope of all the analysis techniques that's out there that you can start to learn and master as part of your business analysis portfolio and toolkit. So here you can see the project template dashboard. This is actually a summary that I've made for you that contains templates for all of these different 50 techniques that we use a lot as business analysts that you, we use a lot as business analysts. So I've categorized it by saying planning, and then we've got here all of the key planning templates that we often use. I've got the core business analysis templates that we most often use. Then of course, there's some agile specific templates that we use with, across the agile project. And then the general everyday um, bread and butter templates that we use just in our meetings and our workshops. I've got some templates for that as well. But this is really just a small section of what's available. And I want to show you exactly what's available. And then we'll delve into one of these templates just so that you can see what it's all about. So here we are looking at the Agile extension, which is the Agile extension to the Babok guide. And here they actually also list another 23 different techniques that a business analyst can use to perform their roles. So here we can start at the top and you can see we've got backlog refinement as you might expect. Then other things like behavior driven development, impact mapping, job stories, Kano analysis, etc. etc. So there are a lot of different techniques that you can get familiar with. And that is not even the Babok guide. So let's now have a look at what does the actual Babok guide have in terms of techniques. Now we are looking at the Babok guide and with the Babok guide, we've got 50 different analysis techniques that we can use. So here I'm just scrolling through the list of 50 different techniques. And many of these techniques are included in the templates I just showed you, but there are a lot here that's not. So it's definitely worth your while to systematically work through all of them. But for today's video, I've chosen one particular technique that I'd like to share with you so that you can see a bit more and learn a bit more how to actually teach yourself these techniques really effectively and quickly. So let's take an example. Let me go back to the screen I showed you before. I wanted to jump into something very common, which is user stories by looking at a template of a user story, but also quickly defining and describing what the user story is. So as you would know, user stories capture requirements, but a user story is much more than just this initial line that we all get taught about how to write the headline of a user story. So as a role, I can, and then you've got a function so that, and you give the business reason. A user story, as you can see, actually consists of a lot of other attributes that is very important for you to include when you start defining user stories. For example, if you are working in a tool like Trello or Jira, you can elaborate your user stories there and use what they give you in terms of a template. Or you can use a template like this, which is available in Notion um, as part of this dashboard. But a user story should always have an ID, just like a requirement used to always have an ID, so that you can always uniquely track it and find it through the life cycle of the requirement. It should have a title, just a very short kind of 
quick reference title that makes sense so that people can refer to it. You've got your headline that if people read this headline user story, they will say, okay, I understand what this user story is trying to achieve. But this is not enough information yet to go and develop something off it. So as part of a business analyst key role, it is to go and elaborate each of these user stories into a lot more detail. Now, before we jump into what that might entail, it does show you here that a user story will, once you've elaborated the, the user story and you've explained to your solution developers exactly what are the detail behind this particular user story, you will also go and define the user acceptance criteria, which is then used for testing. So this is where this fits in and we can discuss the Gherkin format in a different video um, at a different time. But for now, just know that user acceptance criteria is essential for your user story. Then, of course, for traceability um, purposes, you will always have to link back your user story to an epic or a feature. You will typically give it story points, but this is a collaborative effort that you'll do with the rest of your team. So you'll all be um, doing a planning session together and often that will involve taking the next iteration stories and giving them story points, which basically is like a form of estimation of how much effort is involved to develop it. Then the state is typically things like how mature is this user story? Do we really understand exactly what we need to develop or is it still immature and we are still working with stakeholders to figure out exactly what this requirement is all about. Priority, how important is this user story? And then do we have any reference documents or links to other sources that elaborates this user story for us? This can include a, a variety of different things. It could either be things like solution um, architecture documents or it could include elaborated requirements or it could be even policy documents. So sometimes you would combine your use of JIRA with something like Confluence, where you might be linking documents to or from. And then, of course, any comments that you want to make. So this is, as you can see, this is just one template. But what I want to show you is that let's say you have to develop a user story, but you are new to user story elaboration you are not quite sure how to elaborate a user story um, and you'd like to know really quickly how to do it and what to include. Now, this is where artificial intelligence is actually expediting our learning curve and helping us help ourselves really quickly to develop the requirements in a very high standard. So I'm going to take you over to ChatGPT, as you can see. Um, I've already asked, started to ask it a question, so let's see what it tells us. My question here for ChatGPT, and I recommend you use it in the same way, is you say, when I elaborate a user story, what types of information should I capture in and detail? So let's see what it tells us. So it starts with talking about the user role, so who is the user, and we've covered it in our template. We've got the the goal of the actual user story as well. So why do we need it? We've got the acceptance criteria covered. We've got the benefit and value that you can potentially elaborate on. Then you can start looking at things like assumptions. You can think, um, make some statements around the constraints that you know of. User interaction and flow. So this is where you might start to include elaborated models like process diagrams, wireframes. Here, ChatGPT is talking about user flow diagrams, which is almost like customer journey maps. Um, whatever makes most sense. This is where you will go and elaborate on that. And then any non-functional requirements should also be included here. Now, I'm going to ask ChatGPT, what about data-related requirements? How should this be included? Now, let's see what it helps us. So, we are also going to be talking about what if it's data-related. There are often data-related elaboration requirements that needs to be included. 
So here we've got ChatGPT just telling us all the same things again in a slightly different way. But I trust it will give us some ideas of how to capture the data related requirements. And this is just to demonstrate to you that you can start to educate yourself really quickly on how to write really good user stories, not by telling ChatGPT to do it for you, but to ask ChatGPT to help you learn how to do it really well. You can, of course, as you can see in this example, let's just talk about the data attributes for a moment. So we've got data attributes, the sources and the integration, data specific constraints and validation requirements. Maybe there's data privacy and security, data flow and reporting and analytics requirements. So it's really helping you understand what are the different types of things that you can go and in between effectively in between your description and your user acceptance criteria you can include all of this elaboration but if we go back to ChatGPT, you can of course use ChatGPT with some generic guidance to help you come up with content for your user stories but remember to always be very sensitive around what types of information you provide ChatGPT to make sure that you are not breaking any policy related rules at work or sharing any private data. But ChatGPT can certainly help you to start elaborating your, your user stories. But then if you go back to your user story, even if you did use some of ChatGPT to help you, make sure that you go through it properly and that you actually can follow their logic really well. Because remember, you are the one that understands the context really well. You are the one that understands where this user story should begin and where it should end. And ChatGPT doesn't necessarily know that. So you need to always give it that validation check if you start to use ChatGPT a bit more to help you with um, formulating some of these. But in a nutshell, that was what I wanted to show you today. I wanted to show you all the different templates that's available. And you can find a link in the description below if you wanted to grab these templates for yourself. Um, otherwise, also make sure that you go and research exactly how to do all of these different techniques within the Babel guide, as well as within the Agile extension to the Babel guide. So there's so much resources and so much information available. So make sure that you make use of all of that. And I look forward to sharing another deep dive on one of these techniques with you soon. I hope that was useful. Now you know where to go find a lot of the different techniques, analysis techniques, and you've got a shortcut as to how to educate yourself really quickly using ChatGPT to master any of these techniques really well. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and thank you once again for watching.